One of the key components of creating a Kanban strategy is whip limits. If you don't have whip limits, it's definitely not a Kanban strategy that you have. So when you, when you visualize your work, when you do that workshop where you figure out what are the, 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 the columns, the states, the activities that happen for any piece of work that flows through our system and you create those columns, you're going to have to decide what your whip limit is in each of those areas. And coming up uh, uh, with a whip limit is a little bit of an art, right? It's like um, coming up with what's the, what's the Goldilocks zone? for this particular activity. And I actually found out that I, I really fundamentally thought that Goldilocks and the Three Bears was a completely ubiquitous uh, uh, story. Um, but I was working recently with a group in Romania and they don't have Goldilocks and the Three Bears as a bedtime story. It's not a, not a, not a, not a thing. Uh, so kind of what we're talking about, uh, and actually this was the bit that resonated the best for them, was um, think of what they describe of as the Goldilocks zone in planetary physics. I know I'm sounding like a nutball here, right? But bear with me. Um, in, in, in planets, when they talk about planets being in the Goldilocks zone, they mean it's between water freezing and water boiling, right? So you can have life when there's water, but you can't have life when it's steam or in general. I, th that's where they... Yes, I know that's possible, but let's... You've got that, that 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 zone. If the water's frozen, it's probably very difficult to have life. If the water's steam, then it's very difficult to have life. So what is the zone within which it's just right? That's the Goldilocks zone. Uh, and you can go look up the story, the fable later, right? But the idea is that um, we need to figure out not just our whip limit for the whole system, but our whip limit for individual stages in the system and the whip limit for the individual stages if we create individual stages will probably inform the whip limit for the overall system right because you just add them up and that's the whip limit for the whole system so um the ideal whip limit right there is an ideal whip limit if everything is perfect the ideal whip limit is one the most optimal whip limit um in a in in um flow is one single piece flow right but that only works when our um that only works when our system is perfect when it operates exactly like we expect in the timing we expect when all of those things are absolutely perfect and the whip limit is one uh the 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 thing i usually use to visualize that is i i do the a, a, a version of the coin game with teams. If you've not done the coin game, it's a great uh, exercise where um, you give people, you give a group of people uh, 20 coins, they flip them all to heads, and then they, it's a, it's a batch size exercise, right? So they um, flip them all to heads, and then they have to flip them all to tails, pass to the next person. They have to flip them all to tails, pass them to the next person. So you've got this simulation of a production line, right? Something happens in this stage. The next stage happens. Something happens there, next stage. And in an ideal world, you just want one, flip the coin, move it on. Flip the coin, move it on. Flip the coin, move it on. And you'll have the maximum number of coins going in action at any point in time. Does that make sense? Right, you've got if you do batch size of twenty and you've got twenty coins and you've got ten people in a row, you've got one person working and nine people waiting. At all all the time, the whole time. If you do a batch size of one, you've got ten people working, and you'll get the fastest delivery of the first unit of work and the fastest delivery of of all the units of work. Okay? But the world isn't made up of flipping coins, right? We're not, that's not what we're doing all day. We're writing code, we're solving problems, we're painting pictures, we're uh, waiting on customers to reply. There's all sorts of things that make what we do non a non-linear thing, not a thing that just happens at once. So you're going to have to figure out for each of those columns, 
what the most optimal whip limit is based on your ability to keep things moving and the need to identify when there's problems. If we make the whip limit 100 in every column, it's going to be difficult to identify problems because we'll maybe never hit it. We'll never hit the whip limit. We deliberately want to constrain the work to slightly less than we can do so that we create slack in the system that enables us to see more of what's going on, ask more interesting questions, and figure out, do we need to increase this or reduce this one? Those are the types of discussions that we want to have. Um, and whenever we run workshops where we run simulations around this, that's the kind of conversations that people have in the groups is, oh, well, should we create the whip limit bigger? Yeah, but if we create the whip limit bigger, then there'll be more stuff in here and there'll be more pressure on this part of the system. The people in the groups, are then a they're able to visualize those things and see the impact of those things, which is the whole point of a Kanban strategy, that everybody in the system understands the system that you've created better, and it allows them all to have more rational, more interesting conversations about how the system goes together and how we might change it in order to improve it or, or attempt to improve it, and then the impact of those improvements, you're able to monitor them. Uh, that That is really picking whip limits, just make up some numbers at the start, pick stuff, and see what works. Increase them if they're too small, make them smaller if they're too big, and figure out where that optimal level is. Um, if you're really searching for, Martin, what would you recommend as our whip limit? I would say in any stage, as a starting point, if you have to have, uh, Martin says we should do it this way, if you have to have that, uh, then pick one less than the number of people that you have performing an activity in that, in that area. So if you have four people, pick three as your whip limit and see how you go. If you're struggling to create whip limits so that you can see what's going on in your system, then we can help you. We provide world-class class Kanban training from Pro Kanban as well as consulting and coaching for teams try to implement a Kanban strategy. If you're a Scrum team, then we always recommend bringing in flow metrics as a complementary practice and also have Kanban classes from Scrum.org.